divas and what's up divas it's your girl april and of course it is wednesday which is real talk wednesday so before i even begin if you girls are wondering about the hair um it's not actually the video that i did for lily beauty hair on aliexpress this was actually the exact same replica or this one was first but the one that i did for lily hair beauty was actually the exact same thing kinky straight 22 22 20 inches and a 60 inch closure this one here is 22 22 20 and a either a 14 or 12 inch closure and this is from best lace wigs so i've had this probably for like four or five months now and i'll wear it religiously though it does need to be washed um when it gets dirty it kind of gets more fuller but as for that one there have been a lot of ladies emailing me and have purchased the wig after it's already said sold out on my wig site i will be making actually um Two more of the kinky straight ones. I'm about to start one tomorrow and then next week. So for those of you who are interested in it or those, you can always send me an email. They will look exactly like this. However, I think that one of them I'm going to make into highlights. I'm not really sure. Um, but yes, I will have them available. And also for those of you who said, when are you going to update the site? Every time I go, they're out of stock. Your wigs are out of stock. I'm so sorry, ladies, because it seems like as soon as I post a wig up there within an hour or, or so, it's sold out. And even if I post up four, they're gone just like hotcakes. So I do apologize about that. I'm not really sure if the prices are so com com um, competitive because I do make sure that they're low. They're video units. So I wear them for like 15 minutes to do a video review. And then I post them up because it's not that I have no need for them. I only have one head. And after a while, the wigs do start to look the same to me. The lens, the texture, they just really all look the same. And if I'm not going to wear it i'm going to offer it for like a really significantly low price so i do apologize that it says that it's sold out it's hard for me to keep them in stock but i will be posting some up within the next couple of days so you know just check back frequently on the website and you can always send me an email to my muffin is my lovers 2012 email or so forth and i'll be more than glad to assist you um now on to that um other than that, that's just basically it. If you need a real talk about your life situation or you know someone that needs advice or you just want to talk and chat it up, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk, so that I know it is an official Real Talk email and not some solicitor trying to get me to do something that I don't really want to do. <laughs> but other than that, um, yes... Um, long weekend, um, long Easter. I hope you guys had a great spring break or Easter vacation, what have you, and a great Easter. My day after Easter was spent at the African Braiding Salon with my two daughters who are 8 and 13, Mumsy and Nay. They got their hair rebraided, um, and I love these people because their braids will last like six months, like on some real shit, six months. So I don't mind paying the price. It's 170 per person, um, and it doesn't go by children's head. My daughters have a lot of hair. When I say a lot of hair, they make this wig look bald-headed, okay? They have so much hair, and it's like this texture and maybe a lot coarser. So it's a lot of it's a lot of work for me to deal with, and it's a little hard for me to, to do because my hair is very thin. So I'm getting used to learning how to do that type of hair texture. But so it can grow out and be healthy. I like to take them to the African braid place, and I love them there. This is their fourth time going. Um, and yeah. So 170 to me is not a lot, especially if it's for seven, six, seven months. So they've had those braids in since like the beginning of school, September. Um, so yeah, and it's March. So yes, they were time to take out and their hair grew out a lot. But anyway, other than that, let's get into this real talk. We got some to get on and I'm like super hot. Oh my God. I think it's like old age for real. <laughs> So this one is kind of similar to what I did recently on um, my move here, but she more or less needs advice. It's not about how I did it, or basically she just basically needs some advice. And oh, for the drink, this is Amsterdam Vodka, and it is the peach, the orange flavor with some orange juice. So nothing spectacular, just some vodka and orange juice and a straw and some ice and a purple plastic cup. So, I so love your channel and looking to get some advice on how I can relocate. 
I so look up to you for how you moved from New York to Arizona. I am from Jersey all my life and I am ready to go after and I am ready to leave after two bad relationships and two kids. I just need new everything. I have been working the same job logistics manager for 10 going on 11 years. Mind you, it's the same position. I make good money, but there is no room for advancement, only raises. My girls are getting older, 11 and 5, and I really, really have been saving money to leave. I just now don't know where to begin. I started looking in different places, but now I'm just getting nervous about leaving my mom and my family and stepping out there on my own. No support system, no friends, no family. I was thinking about buying a home, but have people in my ear telling me, giving me fears, what if you don't find a job? What if you don't like it? And you bought a home there. Now, it's really bothering me and in turn making me rethink my decisions and I don't want, and I don't want to, I don't want to rethink my decisions. I know this is what I want. Then I start to think maybe I'll wait until I'm married and then move. I just don't know. How did you just go and move and make it work? Was it very easy to get a job? How long did it take for you to settle in? How do I go about finding a house to live in all the way from another state? I believe you did a video somewhat like this, so if you don't do it on the show, please reply with an advice you can with any advice you can. So she didn't leave a name, so we're just going to call her Shirley. So Shirley basically is from Jersey all her life. She hasn't moved anywhere else. She has two kids, two bad relationships. She's ready to leave the state. She just wants to start over fresh. And she's got people, family, and friends in her ear like, what if you don't like it? What if you can't find a job? What if you this? What if you that? You know what? There is a whole lot of what ifs out there. And the more you listen to somebody else, the more you become apprehensive to like, you know what? I don't really think I'm going to go. You really cannot let other people decide your future you know what I'm saying now I say this because that was me don't get me wrong I was terrified to leave um Schenectady New York and that's not where I'm from I'm from New York City but I moved upstate you know what I'm saying as I got much older when I had two kids so I moved upstate but I, I lived there for long enough to the point where I was very accustomed to everything. I was used to everything. I knew where everything was. And even though my life was boring drab and that town had nothing to offer at all, I worked the same jobs for 10, I worked the same job for 10 years as a, v, a senior VIP marketing, senior marketing VIP manager, okay, for a health insurance company. For 10 years, I did this job. And it started to become like stressful to me. But on top of that, I stopped working it because they fired me because I was making too much money. But whatever. Got my unemployment, ran my own business, and so forth. And then I started working from home for different companies like Walgreens, for Amazon. So I was able to bring in money with that as well as I had a business. And I also had my YouTube income or whatever you want to call that. It's not an income, but you know. But either way, you know what I'm saying? I stayed because for a long time is because... My ex, he just didn't want to go. He wanted to move to South Carolina. I'm down south. I wanted to move to Arizona. I don't want to move to Atlanta. I don't want to move down south. I don't want to go there because all oh, the black people are there, like he would say. I want to go somewhere different. But I left, and I finally decided to leave and move because he and I had this huge altercation, this huge fight. And so it basically had me rethink my life and my kids life like you know what there's really nothing here for me and though my mother lives in New York City and my father and my brothers live in Pennsylvania and most of my family is all of my family is on the east coast how often do we spend time with one another maybe they could come and visit me instead of me always visiting them maybe they'll be happy for me However, I've heard it too from my mom, from my best friend, which was my neighbor in Schenectady, um, from a lot of people like, why would you go? What if you don't like it? What if you, you know, everybody always comes back to Schenectady. I'm not going to be one of those that come back. And I am not really going to listen to what you have to say. Like, I listened to my best friend, Angel, for a minute. And I really started rethinking my life. Like, damn, I should just stay. I should just stay. I don't want to go no more. But then I was like, you know what? It's too late, April. You've already decided. You've already flown to Arizona. Arizona and you've already seen what it was like out there and it's too late why are you going to turn back now so even though you hear a lot of people's opinions and thoughts they're just that's their opinions and thoughts you can never knock something until you try it and that's how I felt 
How am I going to say that I don't like something unless I've tried it? How are you going to tell me that I don't like something unless I've tried it? And that was my whole perspective. That was my whole, just, that was my statement. That was my new statement. That was like my key logo, whatever you want to call it. That was what I would say. You can't knock something until you try it. And that's how I felt. If I don't like the West Coast, then I could always come back. But I'm not going to say I don't like it and I'm not going to give it a chance until I've actually given it a chance. So I packed up my kids and I drove all the way across country. And that was the one thing that I really was nervous about the most was driving for four days straight because I have never taken a long journey like that. And me as a single woman with five kids and a dog and a truck, that was a lot for me, but I did it. That was the only part that made me scared and nervous was driving that far. But I was able to handle my own. Every night when I was on the road traveling, I would pull over to a nice hotel. My kids would get something to eat. They would go into the pools at the hotel. They would have a nice room to relax in. And we'd be back on the road in the morning. So I had this in my mindset that I'm going to make this work because my kids deserve this. Not so much me. Because if it were just I, myself, just me, April, and I didn't have no dependents, and I was living in that town, I probably would have stayed because I'm older, and I don't have no one to make sure that their life is going to be greater than what mine can be. But for my kids, I did this. Regardless of how I felt inside, and how scared I was, and how all these people were nagging me and saying things in my ear, I did it because I'm a mother, and I want what's best for my children. And so I know what's best for them. And I'm going to do this. And it's either going to work out right or it's not. And I'm going to give it a chance. So, honestly, when I first got here, it was hot as hell. And I really didn't care for the heat. And it was just a little bit overwhelming. And, of course, I did miss back home. I missed my oldest son, my eldest son, because he only was here for a month. And he went back to his family, you know, his son and his girlfriend. And I cried for my grandson. I was heartbroken for a few months. But over time... I started to really, really love this place. And you couldn't drag me out of here with the guns to my head. Like, there's no way I'm leaving here. I have not even been back to New York to visit, to Schenectady, to visit. And I've almost lived here three years. And this is the quickest three years in my life that have went by. But I am so blessed and I'm so happy to be here. So, how did I make it? It was bravery, but it was something that I had to do for my kids. And of course, I was scared. I would be lying if I told you that I wasn't scared. I was scared to death. Going to somewhere where I have no family, no friends, and this is exactly what it is here to me. I have no family here, and I have no friends. It's just my kids, me and my kids. And it was hard for me, but I've adapted, and I have made friends, and I have learned my way around so many places, and I have seen so many different things. So, of course, wherever you move to, it's an overwhelming. You don't know people, but you know what? In time, you start to learn your way around. You start to learn the area. You start to learn the people, and you start to make friends. And as long as you feel in your heart that this is the right thing to do, you cannot let anybody feed you negativity in your ear. As long as you allow people to feed you negativity, you ain't gonna make it. You gotta tell these people, you know what? I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna find out for myself. And... At the end of the day, I'm going to tell you what, this was the best move that I have ever done in my life for my kids. And they are so happy. They have so many friends. And life out here is just so much different. Just like totally so much different. And I'm glad that I did this. I look back and I'm like, I pat my own self on the back because I'm like, damn, April, you drove all the way across country by yourself with your kids. And you set up shop for you and your kids. And you did everything on your own. And that's what I did. And I had to because these are my kids. And I'm going to make sure that their future is way brighter than mine's has ever been. You know what I'm saying? But as far as how did I find a job, I already had a job. I worked online, so it was easy for me. But there are many job opportunities. What I would suggest to do, if you don't want to buy a house, don't buy a house. To me, rent a house. It's always nice to rent a house because, for one, sometimes you don't have to worry about all the things that come with buying a home. Like, if something breaks down, I got to fix this. And what if you don't have the money? So, buy, buying a home sometimes can be a little bit overwhelming. So, take little baby steps. Especially because you've already taken a big, huge step by moving to another step, another state. 
Take baby steps with buying houses. Rent a home. And if it's something, maybe it's rent to own, do that. You can always find um, rental management, prop property management companies that will give you virtual tours online so that way you can see the home. Because that's what I ended up doing. When I first came here to visit, I could not find a home to live in. So I went to a property management company and she took pictures and sent me pictures. She was so well. She helped me out so much. And if you're wanting to move to Arizona to Phoenix, Arizona, just email me and let me know and I'll give you her number. Um, but she was so helpful and she gave me pictures and the layout of the house and she made sure that where I lived at is a gated community and both of my kids' school is in the gated community So and there's stores around. That's sometimes an easy way out instead of traveling. You can also go and visit, but don't step into the fire. Rent a home. You know what I'm saying? Rent a home and then see if it's something that you want and if it's in the area you want. Get to know the area before you decide to purchase the home. You know what I'm saying? Because what if you purchase a home in this nice area that you like and then like months and months or years down the road, you see another area of that state where you live at and you're like, damn, I should have waited. It's always best to rent sometimes because that way you can weigh your options and you're not locked into something. So that's my advice to you on that. But my main advice is don't let anybody feed you negativity. Don't let that negativity, that negative vibe get to you and make you stop what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Do what you need to do for your kids because at the end of the day, them are the people that are most important in your life. Those little people. They the ones that mean the most and yeah we have mom and dads and i have those two and i talk to them frequently but you got to be there for your own kids and you got to do shit for them because at the end of the day who gonna take care of them you ain't nobody else gonna come through like a mommy's gonna come through and starting over and having new everything let me tell you something it make your soul so cleansed it make you see life totally different when i moved here my attitude changed like i'm i was already kind of I'm a very aggressive person, and I'm very blunt and non-filtered, but it gave me a better outlook on life. You know what I'm saying? I'm still that way, but I'm more pleasant, and I just wake up feeling a lot better, and I just see a lot more. So I'm much more happier here where I'm at, much more. So that is my advice to you. Give Shirley your advice, ladies and gents, of what you would do in a situation if you got people talking in your goddamn ear. Okay, so here we go. Here's another one. Love your videos in realness. My names have already been changed. I need your opinion because I don't believe that my friends are on the same level as I am in life. Not putting them down, but they have not gone through the same things that I have. I, Michelle, am currently 26. Me and my husband, Don, have been together since I was 14. We had children and got married a year after high school. He has been the only serious relationship that I have ever had. After four years of marriage, I got tired with the bullshit with him and other females, and I initiated a separation. He, however, jumped some steps and began divorce proceedings. I didn't feel that I was ready for that step, but I also knew that things that I can offer to a good man. So if he was ready to walk out the door, I was ready to lock that shit on his ass. He was, it was a very bitter, disrespectful breakup. So six months later, I was dating this guy, Chris, and I really thought that we were creating a bond together. My husband, Don, decided to cancel that divorce and work on us. I was not feeling it at all and didn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. So I told Chris, my boyfriend, my new boyfriend, what happened and his re response didn't sit well with me. When me and my husband broke up, I considered myself separated, pending a divorce, meaning that there was no chance of getting back together. Chris, however, stated that he always saw me as a married woman and that it didn't matter to him one way or another. I immediately told him that we were done and that we could just be friends. My friends believe that I overreacted, but I don't believe so. At this point in my life, I know what I want and I'm ready to start building something with someone. I have a good job and a bachelor's in criminal justice, working on my master's. I just don't, I don't just randomly date. I invest my time in someone that I can see myself with in the future. However, I am, in not, a, I am not in a rush. Chris's response made me realize that he didn't take our relationship seriously. He saw me as a married woman and therefore unavailable. FYI, I continued with the divorce, which will be final next week. My question is, is there a difference between separated, pending, 
a divorce or just being separated? Did I overreact? So, Michelle is about to be divorced. By the time I read this, she'd probably be divorced already from her husband, Don. However, she did get a relationship going on with a gentleman named Chris. And he did know about her pending divorce. But he really didn't take it too seriously. Meaning, he's always going to see her as married. You know what I'm saying? When she told him the situation that her husband wanted to work on things. However, she didn't want to work on things anymore. For the simple fact is she was tired of his bullshit and tired of females. I could not... Okay, I... I can't blame her for that. I cannot blame her for that shit because who don't get tired of the other females? It's supposed to be just your ass. So there's really nothing to work on. But she did initiate, uh, basically suggested they get a separation. Her husband, however, decided, I'm going to jump a few steps ahead, bitch, and we're going to get a divorce. I'm going to start the divorce proceedings. So her friends feel like she's overreacted because she told her boyfriend, the new boyfriend, Chris, that they could just be friends because of his, her, his response. I'm not going to knock her because here's one thing. Your friends can tell you one thing and then someone else can tell you another. You can have a, a set of friends over here that's all like this. And you can have a set of friends over here that's all like this. So you got everybody bouncing you around like a beach ball telling you all different types of things. But whose heart and whose feelings is it really? It really matters how you feel. Fuck what everybody else is feeling what they think, okay? What's good for you is what's good for you and how you feel. Why put yourself in a, in a relationship with somebody that's really not taking you serious? You know what I'm saying? That's just like leaving one flame and going to a huge fucking fire. Like, seriously, on some real shit, why bother, okay? Now, as for your husband and you not wanting to work out with, work it out with him, I can totally understand and I can totally get it. As for what's the difference between pending a divorce, a separated pending of divorce or just being separated, there is some type of, there is a difference. Sometimes in, in a lot of states, you have to be separated for with like a year before you can start your divorce proceedings. You know what I'm saying? So say you didn't want, you didn't want to be married anymore and you go to the courts tomorrow and say, I want a divorce. They're not going to automatically grant you divorce. They're going to first, they're going to give you a legal separation, which means for a year, you have to be separated from one another. Okay, and then they could grant you the divorce in that time frame You're really not supposed to be seeing anybody else because they consider it adultery However, that is a difference now separating with pending divorce means the papers have already started for the divorcing Divorcement or divorcing or whatever you want to call it and you can go ahead and date someone my situation as my divorce went ahead It was no separation pending the divorce. We had already been separated for like a few years You know jail counts as a separation and we were totally in two different states and they it was a big situation so you know what I'm saying I moved on my life you move on with your life no big fucking deal you know what I'm saying however if you in your heart regardless this is my opinion if you separated for the motherfucker and you know that you ain't trying to be with his ass no more even if it says you can't go with the proceedings for a divorce for a whole year nigga we done we do I ain't got time to be getting back with you and working shit the fuck out this is the reason why I separated. I separated from your fucking monkey ass. It's because I don't want to be bothered no more. So regardless of what, if this is what you want, and regardless of how anybody else feels, you go for what you know. Now, here's my thing. If you tired of the bullshit, why try to work it out? Working shit out sometimes is great, and it's all, it's A1. It's two thumbs up, especially if you both are in it for the workout, and y'all want to be together genuinely, and you guys are both in this heartfully. But if y'all both ain't, then what is the point of trying to work out something so y'all could be good for like a week or two, and then later on y'all be fucking miserable? Like, that makes no sense at all. And like, I've tried that. There's no reason to go back and forth, no backwards. It's time to move forward. So, yeah, some people feel like, oh, while wow, you're separated, you're not supposed to see someone. Oh, whatever. Some people feel like if you're being separated and if you're in the middle of being divorced, you're not supposed to see anyone. Here's my thing. Nigga, the reason why I'm divorcing you is because I don't want to see your ass no more. So what the fuck does it matter if I'm seeing anybody else? We're not together. I don't want to be bothered with you. I don't want you anymore. Let's just move the fuck on and don't worry about who the fuck I'm seeing. Your friends are always going to have opinions. There's always somebody out there who has something always to say. And I say this so much like, I care about what people think and then I don't care about what people think because... 
when it's all said and done, it's all about what the fuck I feel. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to have their two cents. And it's so fucked up because people always got their two cents to add to it. When you don't even want to hear that shit. Like, really, bitch? When was the fucking last time you was there for me? Are you even living in my shoes or in my household for this jackass? Like, people always have something to say. Just like with my divorce. I got some comments on my video like, oh, you should have worked it out. Bitch, you don't even know what the fuck was going on like that. Talking about I should have worked it out. What you should work out is your motherfucking mouth and shut the fuck up and mind your goddamn business don't tell me what the fuck i should work out how you know i haven't worked it out if you've been in a relationship with somebody long enough that means you work the fuck it out you've been with him since you was 14 you've been working it out since you've been 14 years the fuck old okay and at the end of all the working out you are tired and you will all work the fuck out and there ain't no more working out left there's no more working out left and that means that it's time to just see our separate ways and if you have kids together why make your kids miserable with your bullshit or with you and your husband's bullshit does not make a happy home a lot of people stay because of their kids i was one to do that for a minute because i wanted my kids to have both but at the end of the day these kids is miserable and they don't need to be miserable just because i'm miserable girlfriend please worry about how you feel and as far as chris and you want to be friends with him that's fine because you know what you have more to offer. And maybe that relationship wasn't meant for you. Maybe that was just to see how you would be able to relate in another relationship. Now that you know how some people are and some men are, you can go forward and find the right person for you. Or better yet, you can move forward and find yourself. Because if you're in the process of being a divorcee, sometimes you just got to let it go and woosah. Okay, because bitch, a bitch like me had to woo stop for a long fucking time and not be in any relationship and just be free and relax and not be stressed the fuck out because of no man and just be April. Okay, and find April and find happiness. And that's how I feel like, you know, what I'm saying you've already came out of a relationship and you've already dealt with bullshit. Why jump into another one? So some people want to do that or just some people just don't care or just. Each person is different, you know what I'm saying? Me, personally, I'm not like that, um, and I'm not judging you, but I just felt like, you know what, it's time for me to find myself and focus on myself and my kids. And I really don't give a fuck about a relationship, you know what I'm saying? I just want to relax and be chill, and at the end of the day, put my feet up and walk around in my room, butt-ass naked if I want to, and look how I want to fucking look, and not have to worry about no man saying, why you ain't kick me dinner? Why you ain't grab my feet? Why you ain't wash my drawers? Why you ain't do this? Why you ain't do that okay find time for michelle fuck chris and fuck don and find time for michelle because i guarantee you once you find time for michelle and cleanse your motherfucking soul and heart then you will find the perfect person for you and you won't attract jackasses because sometimes it seems like when we get out of a relationship and then we jump into another one we find a bunch of jackasses Mm-hmm. A bunch of jackasses. And I'm not saying that men are jackasses. I'm not saying that women are jackasses. I'm saying that both of them are jackasses. And sometimes we don't give ourselves enough time to heal and find ourselves and focus on what the fuck we're doing in life. Maybe if we focus more on ourselves, and I'm not saying be stuck up and bitter and conceited, but just focus on yourself, then you will see what you can offer and what someone else can offer and your eyes open up a little bit wider and your brain cells open up a little bit wider opposed to your legs open up a little wider and that way your heart finds the perfect person not everybody that we may date is going to be a one sauce but i guarantee you if you find yourself and cleanse yourself you will be able to recognize a true jackass just like that mm -hmm. so let michelle know what you think what would, you, what would you do and if you were being divorced? What do you think the difference is? Do you think she's right or do, she, do you think she's wrong? Either way, I say enjoy life because it's too short. And don't let anybody, and I mean anybody, make your ass fucking miserable. Not for too long. Definitely not for too long. Mm-mm. Who I can only imagine somebody making me miserable. I have to kill a motherfucker. Ain't about to make me miserable. No way, no how. Not today. No, no, no. Okay, so here we go. So this one is urgent. 
Hi, April. For the video, you can call me Shantae from Texas, and I think that's how you pronounce it, C-H-U-N-T-A-E, Shantae from Texas. I really need your help. I have been separated from my husband for about two years now. We separated due to financial issues. The fact that he held very little ambition for his life, plus he puts his hands on me. During our separation, I reached out to an old friend, a guy that I had been knowing since my college days. I was never attracted to him back then because he was because he looked nerdy and he was a nice guy and in college. I, kn I had no appreciation for his type. However, he was always ambitious and we would encourage each other a lot. We lost touch because my husband was jealous and of course he wouldn't let me have male friends. And I respected his wishes and cut my friends off. Eight years later, I got back in touch with him and he just so happened to be single with no kids and a successful business owner. And just like old times, he was there to help encourage me, especially through my separation. I've always thought he was a good guy and would always make someone a wonderful husband. About four weeks ago, he invited me to take a getaway trip with him to Vegas. And of course I did because I needed the break. He said, don't worry about anything. He's got me. He's always been the type to be generous anytime we went out. Anyway, I had a wonderful time with him. He treated me like a queen. The weekend was magical. We ended up having sex, and after that, I fell head over heels for him, and we became a couple just like that. I told my husband I was moving on for good, and I wanted divorce. Of course, he didn't believe me because I've had said it before, and he was confused because I was just entertaining the thought of taking him back, but here is the tricky part. I missed my period and took a home pregnancy test, and it came back positive. I know that it's my boyfriend's because we had unprotected sex, and I got got my period since the last time I had sex with my husband, which was a big mistake. I know. I'm so scared and confused. I already have two children by two different men, so this would make three, plus I'm still legally married. I brought up abortion, but my boyfriend said no. This is his first baby, and he said he can take care of his child, and I believe him because he is a really great guy. Sweet and generous. He even said that he would marry me once I get a divorce. He admitted to always being head over heels for me, and I always knew that. I know this is going to break my husband's heart, plus people are going to judge the hell out of me, especially my mother, shaking my head. I don't know what to do. Please give me your best advice. I'm not sensitive. I'm not sensitive, so don't hold back. Mmm. So Shantae has been legally separated for two years and she has two kids with somebody else. So she has two kids with two different baby daddies and now she's pregnant again with someone that she's known for years who's actually a very great guy. So she was not attracted to this good guy. We're going to call him... We're going to call him Charles. Charles was not her type because he was nerdy, he was smart, he was ambitious. So she wasn't attracted to him, you know what I'm saying? But she got back in touch with him when her and her husband broke up. And they went on a trip. He treats her like a queen, yada, yada, yada. She loves him dearly. And so she's finally told her husband she wants out of the marriage that she wants a divorce. Okay. And she's pregnant by Charles, her boyfriend, not her husband. But... She doesn't know what to do because she feels like people are going to judge her because, for one, she's got two kids with two different people, so she's going to have three with three different people, and her mother's going to judge her, and she's not divorced yet, but she's in the process of getting divorced, and it's going to break her husband's heart to find out that she's pregnant. First of all, Shantae from Texas, what you worried about your husband's heart breaking because you're pregnant by somebody the fuck else? You've been divorced from that motherfucker for two years. What the fuck you care? The reason why, you, I mean, you've been separated. The reason why you've been separated is because you're tired of his ass. We just went through this on the, the, the prior segment before this. Stop worrying about how he feels. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, he don't care too much about how you feel because if he did, y'all wouldn't be separated, right? And obviously, I'm pretty sure he's whining and dying in bitches too. So what the fuck does it matter? Yeah, we all worry about people judging us, okay? So what? You got two kids by two different people. So fucking what? And who don't? Hello, okay? Hello. So what? You're going to have three kids by three different people. Who gives a fuck? Hello? Um, I'm right here with you, sweetheart, okay? Here's my thing. Okay, so I have five kids, okay? And I have different day baby daddies. Not five different baby daddies. But you know what I'm saying? They ain't all to the same person. But um, just because I had a baby with you don't mean I got to stay with you. If you're a fucking asshole and a fuck up, I'm going to leave you the fuck alone. And if I just so happen to be with somebody else and we have a great relationship and I have another baby with them. Okay, that's baby number two by baby father number two. And I'm going to be with you. But if you act like an asshole, I'm not going to stay with you just because we got kids. 
Okay, I'm gonna leave your ass the fuck alone too. So stop worrying about what everybody thinks. You ain't the only female out there with two baby daddies and two kids, or three kids and three baby daddies. You know what I'm saying? There's somebody around the corner from you, Shantae from Texas, that got probably five kids and five baby daddies, or nine kids and nine baby daddies, okay? It don't really matter. As long as you take care of your fucking kids, what the fuck do you care what bitches think, okay? As for your mom and her disappointments in you, here's the thing. When haven't our parents been disappointed with us? There has been many times that my mother has been totally disappointed with me. Okay? When I got pregnant when I was first 16 and I didn't tell her. And I got an abortion. She was disappointed that I didn't tell her. When I got arrested and went to jail for attempted homicide to my ex. She was disappointed. Hmm. When I got arrested for fighting. She was disappointed. When I got in a relationship with somebody else and had a baby with them and it didn't work out she was disappointed okay when i moved to arizona far away she was disappointed when i got all these fucking tattoos she was disappointed i mean so yeah when is she disappointed and that's my mama and i love her to death but i'm not here to please every fucking body i'm gonna please myself and that's what you need to do as long as you continuously feel like I'm not going to do this because somebody's going to judge me and I'm not going to do this because of how this person is going to feel and look at me, then you are never going to get ahead. You have a baby growing in your belly. And why would you want to abort it because of what other people think? That is the lamest, most fucked up excuse to get rid of a child because you worried about what other people think. That baby deserves a chance. Now, I am not against abortion and I am not for it. This is my thing. It's your decision and your body. You do what pleases you. I'm not out there with the picketing fences talking about, oh, no abortion, no abortion. People have different situations and different reasons. So, therefore, I am not a judgmental person when it comes to getting an abortion. However, when you are feeling like you want to get an abortion because you're worried about having three kids with three different baby daddies, or you're worried about what people are going to think of you, or you're worried about breaking your soon-to-be ex-husband's heart because you're pregnant with somebody else's baby, then that's when I just got to put my low-key opinion in the shit and let you know, don't be a stupid fucking ass because you're worried about what other people think, okay? Because I guarantee you, once this little bundle of joy is born, everybody going to be so up your ass. Oh, can you send me pictures? Oh, let me see the baby. Oh, when are you going to bring the baby? Oh, he or she is so cute. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm glad you got a divorce, honey. You should have left that nigga alone a long time ago. You see what I'm saying? So people always got some shit to say. Always got some shit to say. I personally get tired of what people fucking think and what people say. Sometimes I would go around and tell people, fuck you, because I don't really give a shit how you feel about me. If don't nobody like April, you think I give a fuck? I don't care. At the end of the day, I don't care about anybody disliking me. You don't have to like me because tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up, hopefully, pray to God, I'm going to wake up and I'm still be the same person. And if you still disliking me, then you know what? Continue to dislike me because I really don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And what you think about me, I don't really care. Like I used to say, um, this girl, she grew up in a project with us and she have, um, she had five kids and she has five baby daddies, okay? And I used to judge her and say shit about her, like, oh, she got all them kids. Oh, she crazy now. But we first started out with, oh, she got three kids with three different baby daddies. Mm, shaking my head. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't saying shaking my head, but I was shaking my motherfucking head. You know what I'm saying? And who am I to judge her? Because I'm right there with her. Like, I'm in the same boat. Like, I have other kids. I have kids and they have different fathers too. So, who am I to judge? Like, don't judge a person until you are able to wear their shoes. People always open their mouth and judge people. And they don't know their situation. They don't know their life. They ain't in their shoes. You know what I'm saying? People are always quick to judge some people. Just like, and it could be any fucking thing because people are so fucking petty oh you wear too much makeup you they but you're watching the makeup video why the fuck are you watching the makeup video if you feel like i'm putting too much makeup on you look beautiful without makeup maybe you should just wear a little bit of eyebrows and eyeliner and that's it and you'll be beautiful bitch maybe that's what the fuck you think okay maybe or love yourself what makes you think that i don't love myself because i got on a wig or i got on makeup what makes you really honestly think that i don't love myself because i'm putting on makeup and hair. Like, who says dumb shit? People always got something to say. It don't matter how good you doing or how bad. Somebody always got to put their two fucking cents in anything you do. And me personally, 
I stop giving a fuck about what everybody feels, okay? Because y'all don't really give a fuck about how I feel, so why the hell should I care? It don't matter if you got one husband and and you about to have baby number 10. Somebody gonna say something. Just like with the Duggars. You know, the Duggars, they got 19 kids. All of her 19 kids are with the same man. But... There are people that still got some shit to say, like, oh, I don't know how she can have all them kids. She just keep having kids after kids after kids. Bitch, she got 19 motherfucking kids with the same person, and he there taking care of them. You got 10 kids with 10 different people? Who are you to fucking talk? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really care how many kids you got with how many people. That's your business. As long as you ain't a crackhead and you taking care of your kids, what does it fucking matter? Just because you have kids with somebody does not mean that you have to stay with them, okay? Because you have kids does not mean you have to stay with them. So what? You have kids, you have two kids, and you're pregnant right now. If you're happy with who you are and you're happy with your relationship then fuck everybody else and worry about you. Because ain't nobody else worried about you. Worry about you. And if this is the man that you want to be with, then for so God be it, be with his ass. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about what your soon-to-be ex-husband's heart is going to feel like. Man, please, he wasn't worried about your heart, so why the fuck should you worry about him? You ain't the only woman that's going to be pregnant, having a baby, and ain't divorced yet. You ain't the first one, and you damn sure ain't going to be the last, okay? I guarantee you right now, Shantae from Texas, there's some bitch watching that's about to have a baby that's married and is having a baby with somebody. So stop worrying about what everybody got to say and how everybody feel all the time. Me personally, I don't give a fuck about how people feel about if you don't like my wig, weave, makeup today, so fucking what? I like it. I ain't worried. So, here's my opinion to you. Don't go aborting no baby because you're going to have three kids with three different baby fathers. Sometimes it takes three strikes to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Worry about you. And if this is what you want, then this is what you got. And if this is you and him staying and y'all want to have a baby together, fuck everybody else and stop worrying about everybody. Because I guarantee you, life is too short. And if you constantly worried about what other people fucking think about what the fuck you be doing, girl, please, you'll be fucking aggravated and you'll be fucking stressed out and running around here with a chicken with his head cut off. So on some real shit, stop worrying about what everybody thinks. Okay? So on that note, let Shantae um, know what you girls think. And as always, go ahead and leave your comments below. And if you need an email or a video, just send me an email. My email address is below. And as always, stay diva and divalicious. And I'll be back on my next video.